السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر طلحہ شیخ اینڈ یو آر واچنگ پاکستان ویٹنی ایجوکیشن دس از تھرڈ لیکچر آن دا اسکیلٹن سسٹم اینڈ ان دس ویڈیو وی ول لرن اباؤٹ دا ریڈیولوجیکل سائنس آف اوسٹیومالائٹس اینڈ بون ٹیومرس اوسٹیومالائٹس از مور کامن ان کیٹس دین ڈاگس دا پاسبل کاز مے بی ڈیپ کیٹ بائٹ it may arise uh, due to wound infection or uh, some um, uh, blood borne diseases uh, and uh, like other uh, tissues infection in the bone uh, may results in the tissue death after the tissue death uh, uh, you know uh, there is a, a dead bone the uh, dead dead bone is uh, then reabsorbed and uh, replaced by the fibrous connective tissue there will be definitely a proliferation of the healthy bone uh, in the vicinity to confine such type of infection now if we talk about the radiological signs there will be loss of the trabecular pattern especially in the metaphyses that is a uh, most common site of infection the second sign is lysis or the destruction of bone which you know that uh, it will be radiolucent it should be very clear that radiographically osteomyelitis and neoplastic growths looks very similar so it's often difficult to distinguish between osteomyelitis and uh, neoplastic growths growths so don't give any uh, tentative diagnosis or any type of di- diagnosis until unless uh, uh, histopathology is uh, done next is periostritis and uh, there will be subperiosteal new bone formation then the bone with osteomyelitis will have thin and uh, eroded cortex at the site of infection infection can spread from one bone to the other and uh, in the joints also squestrum and involucrum are two radiological signs that uh, may be noticed in osteomyelitis in chronic osteomyelitis a piece of bone that is uh, devascularized and separated from the remaining bone and act as a needles for ongoing infection this is called squestrum while in case of involucrum around the squestrum there will be formation of thick sheet of the periosteal new bone in this radiograph you can see the blastic response in the proximal part of the tibia now you can see uh, uh, the distal end of the humerus in which lytic response is very very clear in both these radiograph differential diagnosis will be tumor so it is very important uh, uh, before giving any type of uh, confirmatory diagnosis uh, we should go towards the uh, histopathology uh, for the confirmatory diagnosis bone tumors you know tumor may be benign or malignant before starting it should be very clear that like soft tissue tumor in case of bone tumors benign tumors have smooth periosteal lining while malignant tumors are uh, uh, become very irregular in shape and show multiple periosteal reactions like sunburst uh, uh, coldman's triangle and many other periosteal reactions in case of malignant tumors there will be osteolysis of the bone with, with some bone destruction sometimes disorganized new bone formation may be seen one of the most important characteristic of uh, the m- malignant tumor is irregular or indefinite periosteal outline and there will be no clear demarcation between affected uh, and the normal bone periosteal reaction may be sunburst cordman's triangle or sometimes so bubble like so periosteal bone formation occurs uh, same uh, as uh, in osteomyelitis due to osteolysis and weakening of the bone there are chances of the pathological fracture then uh, metastatic lesions may be found in other parts of the body because you know that in metastasis uh, tumor cell tumor cells 
can go in the blood supply and they can uh, move elsewhere in the body so in such cases uh, they residue in the in the lungs and uh, form the nodules which can be seen radiographically so in malignant tumors just x-ray should be done to check the stage of the cancer either it is spread in the body or uh, it, it is confined if it is confined then uh, uh, we can uh, start uh, uh, the radiotherapy and uh, chemotherapy and uh, in some cases uh, we can uh, go for the leg amputation if the patient has a nodule in the lung then it should be only shifted on the chemotherapy or the radiotherapy uh, while uh, uh, if the patient uh, has no nodules in the lungs uh, no any signs and now any pathological lesion in the lungs then uh, we can shift the uh, patient uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy and uh, with this we usually recommend the limb amputation so that uh, the tumorous cells not go into the blood and uh, further disease not spread Sarcomas are the malignant tumors of the connective tissue that may originate on variety of uh, uh, tissues like blood vessels, bones, cartilage, muscles, organs, nerves, and lymphatic tissues. In short, uh, all the all uh, the organ that have uh, all the such structure that have connective tissue are prone towards uh, sarcomas. Some most common malignant tumors are osteosarcoma fibrosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, myeloma, hemangiosarcoma, liposarcoma, lymphangiosarcoma, neurofibrosarcoma, schwannoma, and synovial cell carcinoma. Now, uh, here uh, osteosarcoma is, uh, you know, that uh, sarcoma of bone. Fibrosarcoma uh, is a type of sarcoma of fibroblast cells. Then chondro means cartilage, so it is sarcoma of uh, cartilage bone. Then myeloma means tumor of the myelite cells. And do you know that myelite cells are present in the bone marrows and uh, they are basically precursors for RBCs and WBCs. Then hemangiosarcoma means sarcoma of blood vessels. Liposarcoma means uh, sarcoma of the lipids or fats. And then uh, uh, lymphangioma means lymph nodes are involved in uh, sarcoma. Neurofibrosarcoma uh, means uh, sarcoma of nerve fiber. Next one is uh, schwannoma. Schwannoma is basically uh, sarcoma of Schwann cells. And uh, if sarcoma develops in the synovial joint, it is known as synovial cell carcinoma. Osteosarcoma, osteosarcoma or osteogenic sarcoma. Most common tumor in cats and dogs, but it is more common in dogs, especially it occur in old ages between 5 to 9 years of age. It is divided further into the three types. Lytic type, we generally uh, call it osteoclast. The second one is sclerotic type, uh, which is known as osteoblastic type. The third one is, and sometimes you will find mixed type in which lysis and uh, sclerosis occur at the same time, but uh, there will be irregular growth and this type is very, very common uh, than the other two. Distal extremities of radius, ulna, tibia and femur and proximal extremity of the humerus are most common predilection sites of this tumor. Osteogenic sarcoma usually arise uh, in the medullary cavity. And then pathological signs uh, that begin in the metaphysis rarely crosses joint space. Now, if we talk about the periosteal reaction, it may be sunburst or uh, some type of spicules. And uh, sunburst is more common and uh, it is almost 50%, while uh, spicules of the periosteal new bone radiate outward. Parosteal osteosarcoma is an uncommon slow growing osteosarcoma that arises in the periosteum and parosteal connective tissue. Osteosarcoma usually metastasizes to the lungs and uh, as I discussed before, in the lungs tumor foci appears rounded 
discrete density is called cannon bone metastasis. Metastatic foci or cannon bone metastasis under 1 cm in diameter may sometimes not visible radiography. So, sometimes we have go for the CT scans to diagnose such type of uh, tumors. Osteosarcoma may arise in the soft tissue, occasionally seen in the degeneration of uh, mixed memory tumors in uh, female dogs. So, in this picture, you can uh, see an outgrowth in the distal radius of the left side that may be osteosarcoma. This is proximal fabula that is involved in mixed type of osteosarcoma. Now, you can see osteoblastic or osteolytic changes at the affected site. Now, this osteosarcoma of distal radius in which lytic changes are uh, very, very clear. This is osteosarcoma of uh, distal femur is very clear. It should be very clear. Always recommend histopathology for confirmation in such cases. Here you can see the periosteal reaction. No fibrosarcoma is uh, an abnormal region of fibroblast cell and normally they originate in the soft tissues. But in some rare cases, it may originate in bone uh, and uh, then weaken the bone structure and may cause pathological fracture. Fibrosarcoma are uh, mostly benign and non-metastizing. But in some rare cases, tumor is malignant and uh, metastasizes throughout the body. Uh, and then into the organs, uh, lymph nodes and uh, skin. If we talk about the nature, it is primarily lytic in nature and uh, result in widespread bone destruction. It is slow growing and uh, frequently invades adjacent uh, joint space. In this radiograph, you can see the lytic changes and uh, uh, this is another radiograph in which uh, you can see the lytic changes uh, in the ileum. No chondrosarcoma is primarily affect flat bones uh, that are uh, scapula, pelvis, and ribs. Lysis of the bone uh, is a marked feature. Metastasis uh, in such cases is very slow and uh, less frequent. And uh, uh, this is very clear case in which you can see the lytic changes. Next is myeloma which is a tumor of the myelite cells and uh, these cells are uh, precursors of RBCs and WBCs and uh, these are present in the bone marrow. So normally they found in the bone marrow and uh, lesions are seen at uh, several sites. The pathological lesions are look like punched out areas of the lysis uh, without any surrounding reaction. So, look at this radiograph, multiple myeloma in the bone marrow of the humerus uh, and radius and ulna are seen and uh, in which you can see the punched out areas of lysis. Benign bone tumors. These are rare in cats and dogs and the feature of the benign tumor includes, uh, you know that and they have well marked edges, uh, provoke no periosteal reaction. And it does not invade in the surrounding tissue, but uh, they may displace them due to their size. Bone cysts are uh, uh, rare. They cause expansion of bone, loss of tra normal trabecular pattern and the central area of the radiolucence. They are sharply demarcated uh, by the surrounding bone. Cortex is very thin and uh, there will be no periosteal reaction. This is bone cyst uh, in which uh, you can see cortex is very thin and inner core is radiolucent. Last one is osteochondromas. They, they are also called multiple cartilaginous exostosis. They appear as a protegion in the metaphysis, grow with the developing skeleton. The cortex and the medullary cavity are continuous with the bone. It may cause pressure on the surrounding structure and may cause uh, uh, some symptoms. These osteosarcoma cease to grow uh, when the skeleton matures. In this picture and uh, then radiograph, you can see exostosis that are osteosarc osteochondromas. 
uh, this one is case of the dog uh, this is uh, basically synovial joint where osteochondromas are developed i hope so that uh, this video will be uh, will also be very helpful for you in the future please uh, like the video and uh, subscribe the channel for more informative videos